In our previous chapter, we saw how to create a process with its forms. We are now going to focus on creating a living application that allows us to display our business data and start our process. To do that, I'm going to go uh, in the UI designer. I'm going to start to create a new page. So this is different from forms because we don't expect to submit data here. We only want to list data. So I'm going to create a new page here. I'm going to call it expense report listing. My application will have only one page to start with. All right. So I'm going to provide a title. So I'll use a title here. Uh, it will be expense report. Oops. Then I'm going to provide a list of my expense report just under it. I will need to retrieve those expense report. Um, if you remember, we had access to the REST APIs to fetch our data. So we're going to write uh, a query using the REST APIs to fetch our expense report objects that are stored in our BDMs. I will name my uh, variable expense reports. This will be an uh, external API call. And the URL to call here is API to start with, because it's an API, then BDM, because we fetch a BDM object, then we need to provide the name of our BDM. If you don't remember, uh, we can look at our studio, and in the studio we can look in our business data model, we can get back the type of our BDM. This one is expense report, this is what we want, we want a table to represent those objects. So we'll use uh, the package prefix here, with which we left by default. We will use then the name of the object, expense report. And additionally, we'll use a query. So we'll use one of the default queries, which have been generated for us. We'll use the find query, which is just basically retrieving a list of our objects. Now, if I go back to the UI designer, the uh, URL to call is, it's a business data. And we want to use the uh, package name, so that was com.company.model.expense report, that's our object name. And then we, we say uh, our query has the following parameters. The query is called find, this is the query we just saw previously. And we want to give two extra parameters. Uh, these parameters are going to be used for pagination. So the first one is the page we want to display, so we're going to display the first page which is page zero. And we give the size of the page uh, with a C, which is uh, result count, C for count. And we'll say we'll get the first 10 ones, for example. Of course, uh, this uh, parameter, which is the maximum result of 10, um, is something you can make dynamic here in this example. We'll just work with the first 10 examples, 10 uh, results. I'll save that. The next uh, step now is to configure a bit uh, my headers uh, in my table. So instead of showing uh, these um, default uh, he headers, I'm going to provide my own headers to do to work with. Here I'll choose what I want to display. So I'll pick the in the headers the labels of my attributes. I'll use the attributes from my BDM. I'll use the summary, the, uh, the approved and creation date. So I'll provide some labels here. I'll say created on. Uh, summary and I'll say approved. Then in the content I pick up uh, the data that I have selected in my expense report query. I uh, notice that I clicked on the bind icon to make sure we bind to the uh, data. I select my expense report. Then I'll say select my column keys. Uh, here I'm going to work on the exact attribute names of my BDM, so I can always check back in the studio where are these proper names. We'll display the creation date. Uh, we have to convert it using an angular filter, so pipe date to transform the uh, timestamp of the date into a real readable uh, date. Then summary. And lastly is approved. This will show me a nice form. I will not fill the selected row for now, we'll do that in a second iteration. What we'll do is we'll allow the end user to select one row from the expense reports and this will show more details on the selected expense report. For now, we're just going to work on this basic page here. I'll save it 
We're not going to preview it yet because we have no data behind it. What we're going to do is we're going to run the process at least once to generate some um, sample data. Then we'll be able to preview our, our table with at least one row. So we're going to run uh, an instance of our process. To do that, I'll need to go back to the studio. I will click on uh, Run by selecting my process. I do not need to complete the entire process. I will just need uh, to execute at least the case store. This will feed my, um, my BDM data. So it will be enough to display some information at least for uh, the, our first page. All right, so I have created the first instance. I can go back to the UI designer now and I can hit the preview button. And here you notice that we do see our data displayed correctly. So we have a first working page. Uh, we can now uh, save it again and make sure we start to create our application using this page. To do that, we're going to start by exporting our page with the export button here. This creates a zip file containing our page and its resources. Then we need to go back to the portal. Uh, to open the portal, we can type the URL or we can launch it from the studio. And in the portal, we need to go into the administration profile here and we'll have a look at resources. Uh, notice there are different types of resources with different filters here. Uh, we can add our resource without considering the filter. And here we'll add our page zip file, uh, which is located in my downloads. All right, so this is the file page expense report listing zip. We open it and we'll upload it. Can confirm the import, and here we go. We have a first page deployed. Now the page itself uh, is not very useful. We need to add it into an application. So that's the next step. We'll create our expense report application. So I'll hit new in, in application. I'll just call it expenses, and I'll provide a URL to access it called expenses also. I'll leave it with version 1.0. I will make it available to everyone with the user profile. And I'll say this is an expense application. All right, we can create the page now. Uh, once the page is created, uh, we'll need to configure it. So I'll go into the actions here and then I'll edit my page. Here it's a recap of my different settings. Uh, with the basic look and feel, default theme, the pages, and the navigation. So we'll focus on this lower part of the screen to add our new page. So we'll add our custom page called expense report listing here. I uh, will have it under the URL uh, called uh, reports. There. I will get rid of the uh, default uh, home page. This is just a template for a home page. I will reset my new page as the home page and I will erase the default home page. Then uh, we can provide a menu. Uh, this is not needed in our case because we have only one page. If we wanted, we could have multiple pages and we could navigate around them with a menu. Okay, so now we have, um, we have saved uh, our application. We can now open it by clicking on the URL here and we have our page displaying our expense reports. So that's a really basic application here with a single page with an expense report. Now, we're gonna increase a bit uh, the usability of this page here by providing more details. So we're gonna allow the end user to select the page and go navigate um, to fetch more information about each individual reports. To do that, I'm gonna go back to the UI designer then I'm going to declare a new variable. I'll call it uh, selected report. I'll just leave it uh, blank for the type string, doesn't matter. Then I will select my table and I will use the selected row uh, binding here to use my selected report variable. So what this means basically is then is that when I'm going to click on one of my table rows, it's going to take the content of the array expense reports and assign the selected value to the variable called select report. So what I can do next is I can add a whole section on my page that will appear only when I have selected something. So when select report is not null and it will display the details of the selected element. 
To do that, I'm going to use a container. I use a container to wrap all the information and to use the hidden property to show everything or hide everything depending on the selection. So I will bind the variable, the, the attribute hidden to the selected report equal null expression. That means that when I do not have a report selected, I will hide my entire container. And then I can provide some details in the container. So I'll start with a title. I'll sh put it a bit uh, smaller here. I'll call it report uh, details. I can now add the detail of the report selected. So I'll just add a couple of labels. I'll start by providing a label for uh, the um, created by. Notice that I put the bold HTML tag to have uh, my label appear in bold here. So I'll just use a first uh, label. I will separate the label from the actual content, so I'll reduce the width of the, the content here to only two columns out of 12. Next to that, I'll put another block of text here to contain my data. I'll bind this to selected report dot created by by with a lowercase y. This I will also reduce because I want to place more content next to it. I'll reduce this to four. I will add another label here to indicate the date, also in bold. Created on here with the column. I will also reduce the width of this and I will finish with the creation date binding on selected report dot creation date and not forgetting the, the pipe date to transform date into a readable format. That's it for the first line. I will not add a second line. Uh, the second line will display the summary. Be careful to add uh, the line uh, directly in the container because it will appear always if you don't. So this will be the label for the summary. columns, also limited to two columns. Next to it, I'll place the summary. Selected report dot summary. Then we'll add an R also um, the uh, information about the approval. So we'll add another line here with the label for approved. and we'll add the value in a box next to it. Select report dot is approved. We'll continue just like that to put uh, another block just below that to display the approver comments if there are some approver comments. To do that, we could uh, add two labels directly, but I'm gonna also uh, use the same trick as I did on the container here. So I'll add a container just below to hide or show the approver comments depending on whether we have one or not. So I will create another container there and I will use the hidden property to display only this block if we have um, approver comments. So if selected report that approver comments equal null, I will not display uh, the block here. I will only display if we have some comments. Then I need to work in my smaller container here. I need to add also a label for the approver comments. Then I will add uh, the content of the approval content, comments, sorry, here with the binding mapping to selected report dot approver comments. Okay, so now we have a better form. Uh, we would need to move a bit forward. Uh, we can just preview it now. Okay, so what we see now is still our line of information. When we click on it, we see the details. And you can notice here that we don't have a username, we have a user ID. Uh, what we stored in our BDM was just the user ID. So we will need to iterate on our design to do a REST call to fetch uh, the username from the Bonita database. So we will use the ID of the BDM to retrieve uh, the object from the Bonita database. 
Then you also notice that we don't have the approvers comments. That's normal. We haven't uh, provided uh, comments yet because we are not in, uh, in the stage of the process where we had the comment. So you don't see the uh, lower line with the approvers comments. Let's go back to our form. We're going to create a new variable. This variable will be called uh, creator user. And we expect to use uh, an external API. We will call a uh, bunch API called the identity API to retrieve a user object. And we wish to retrieve the user which matches uh, the ID provided in our BDM. So here we use a dynamic parameter between double curly brackets and we use our selected report dot created by property. This contains uh, the user ID and this gets injected in the REST uh, URL that we are going to call. This retrieves an entire user object. Now that we have retrieved our creator user, we are going to use it to display the first name and last name of our user. So I'm going to replace uh, the text here, data select report created by, with our new uh, label. The label will actually be composed of two elements, so I'm not going to bind it directly. I'm going to use two curly brackets expressions. The first one will be used to retrieve the first name, so I'll use creator user first name. I'll put a space there and I'll actually I'll copy just that. And I will add the last name just after. So we'll have the first name and the last name. I can now save my form, preview it, and normally here we'll have correct name here, Walter Bates. Now the next step uh, to go through is to add the lines of the report. So we'll add another uh, block below the report details to show the lines. There we go. And this I'll call report lines. I'll put it at the same level as the other one. So that's level four. And here I will use another table to display uh, the lines. The lines have two elements. They have a, a label and they have a cost. For the content, I will bind my widget data to the selected report.lines attribute. This contains an array of my different lines. For the column keys, uh, I will use the uh, name of the BDM attributes of the lines. You can always go back again to the studio and BDM, look at the different attributes name. The name are just label and cost. That's simple. Now for the cost, I'll do an extra trick. I'll use a filter, an angular filter, pipe currency to add uh, a dollar symbol in front of it. Okay, so now I can save my page and I can preview it. Let's have a look. And here we now see the report lines with the proper currency and proper data in the lines. OK, next step is to export our page to create the zip file. Go back to the portal and redeploy it. So we'll go into administration section, into resources. We'll pick up uh, the first uh, deployment we did and we'll update it with edits and re-upload the new page we just generated. We overwrite the page, okay? And we can refresh our application page. If I select my report here, I will see the report details and the report line correctly, just like I have previewed them using the UI designer. This concludes the creation of our small application. Uh, during this chapter, we have seen the creation of a custom page. We have seen how we can retrieve business data in our application page. We have also shown how we can create an application using the page and how we can successfully live update our application by replacing a page without having any downtime. Thank you for having followed this chapter.